Do you ever wonder why apps made by Apple look so good? Well, I'm here with Ange, who has 10 years of experience as a senior iOS engineer, and he's going to show us the seven tips and tricks on how we can vibe code mobile apps that look like they were designed by Apple. And by the end of this video, you will know exactly how to build a beautiful app directly from your phone and get it on the App Store. Let's not waste any time. Let's dive in. Yeah, so one of the biggest things that is an advantage for people who are using the vibe code app is that you can use Apple's native features like their new new glass UI, their liquid glass UI, or a bunch of other things as well, like their segmented controls, their modals, their bottom sheets, their large headers, their animations that come baked in. If you've used an iPhone or if you have an iPhone, you definitely know what I'm talking about. You can go to like any of the popular iOS apps, like, you know, let's say the app store, you can see like the header at the top where it says today just like kind of scrolls away or these like liquid glass bottom sheets that look super nice or this like search tab that looks super nice with the animation when like expands. These kinds of things come baked in by default in iOS apps. And you can't get this on the web apps. You can't get this at all if you're using Lovable, Bold, V0, or Applet. You can only get this if you're using a native iOS builder like Vibecode. Right. So, Vibecode's the best place to do this because we have all these features baked in. No one else has any of these features baked in. So you can just go to the app and build an app, whatever you want, and add those little elements. You don't have to add all of them. You can just add a few of these elements yeah. in your app. And we're going to provide you with the exact prompt to get any of these features into your app. So we're going to base off our to-do app off the Reminders iOS app. It's a super simple, clean iOS app. And now the first thing we're gonna build is the large header transition. So the header on this screen, you can see it says reminders, right? And when I scroll down, you see the reminders text changes from this large header to small header and adds this like fade in animation. Now, if you were doing that manually, that would be a lot of work, but because you can use the vibe code app and you can just prompt it in one sentence, it's super, super easy. So here is a demo of me implementing the exact same transition. You see that? So it's like this large header transition that goes into this like blurred header. So this is what we're gonna be implementing in a to-do app. So let me start by generating a to-do app. Create me an app that looks like the Apple Reminders app. It should be a very simple and minimalistic to-do app that looks like Apple Reminders. It should look exactly like the Reminders app you find on the iPhone. Oh yeah, search the internet and you know figure out how the Apple Reminders app looks like. Find some images if you can and then make it look exactly like that. It usually does a good job when you tell it to search the internet. Like it'll probably just like find someone who's rebuilt it before yeah and it'll make it just like that cool let's hope that works okay cool so our app is done you can see this the first prompt i wrote it created a bunch of tasks and it just finished the app is now running on your device so let's go into the app wow that looks pretty good looks pretty close to the reminders app. it looks kind of like the old one before it looks like iOS the old 26. one yeah, yeah it probably has old training data but i can add a list okay nice new list Ch choose an icon these icons look great and then i can add a new reminder okay that's a little bit janky but i can add it and that looks pretty good okay so i think the first thing we want to do obviously we want to fix the the little reminder thing at the bottom but i think the first thing we want to do is implement this sort of large header transition so i'm going to put in my prompt here so i have the prompt copied but first i'm going to select which header i want to animate so i'm going to use our select feature then i'm going to click select and then click on the header and i can see when the borders pop up on which element I'm selecting, I can select an element and then click done. And then the app will know which element I selected. So I will say, make this element a large header uh, title with the iOS animation. Here's how. And I'm going to paste the prompt, which gives it the technical instructions and what to do. And I'll just fire it. And this is the exact prompt I used to make this happen. So large header titles and we'll include this document at the end of the video with all of the prompts that we use in this video. Yeah, don't, don't worry. I know this prompt like looks scary, but it's like, you don't need to understand it. It's just the most efficient way to convey to the AI what to do. 
Tip number one is use large header. So this is the app that I made and you can see the large header. Nice. It looks exactly like the reminders app. If you want to make do this right now, this is like the cutting edge of like making your apps look awesome. So this is the first thing we implemented. The next thing we're going to implement is context menus. So when I can long press an item in the reminders app, for example, you get this like nice context menu, mm. which you, you can do a bunch of things like delete details of your reminder, etc. And so we're going to implement this. So I wrote out a prompt for it. It's right here. This one's way simpler. It's just use Zigo context menu, open and long press, map item sub menus with native look, no custom styling, here are the docs. Amazing. And you just drop the docs. So if you All just this, copy that, uh, the context menu one right there and paste it in and say, please implement this in whatever app, as long as there's something that it can long press, yeah. it'll add it. And yeah, you can add more context to the prompt about the context menu. You know, you can say, put it on this element or like, you know, you can use the select tool and be like, oh, put it on this other element. You can do whatever you want, but this is like the base prompt, which you can use. So it just implemented the Zigo context menu. And this is basically how it works. So I can long press a reminder and we have ah. this exact context menu. I can even like move lists. I didn't tell it to implement any of this, but I just made it up. I can mark it as complete. Could you we'll add mark something complete. new to the list? Yeah, sure. No, I meant like uh, through vibe code, like add a different option, like a share option. Yeah, of course. List. You okay, can just cool. tell it. You can tell it, add something new to the context menu. So this is called a context menu. And then obviously you can delete stuff, but yeah, it works pretty well. And this, allows us to like make our app just feel a lot more native. Next, we are going to implement the bottom tab bar. So this feature is there on the App Store app, for example. So we're gonna implement this, which is pretty nice. So we're gonna see how that can work. And I don't think any vibe coding tool out there can do this right now. So this is all like brand new stuff. So let's make another tab in our app. What should we call the other tab? Maybe we should uh, call note. it notes. Yeah, perfect. Let's do reminders and notes together. Cool. All right, so this is the prompt I used here. Use React Native bottom tabs and bottom tabs React navigation package to implement native bottom tabs. Here are the docs. So you can see a pattern with these prompts where it's just like use this package and use these docs. The reason why we have to do this is because any of these like new fancy features usually aren't in the training data for the AI, which makes it so that you have to be very, very explicit in what you want. And by the way, if you're new to um, vibe coding, you might not even know what docs means. And all of that is just a <laughs> link to the instructions yeah. manual where this can be found. So the AI agents are smart enough to go read the instructions to implement it properly. Yeah, exactly. I copied this prompt and I pasted it into the app. As you can see right over here, I pasted it in. Cool. And then I wanted another tab called notes. And there we go. Boom. Look at that. Another tab called notes. Uh, yeah, so, that's pretty cool. Can I feel it? Yeah, go ahead. That's pretty cool. So oh, that looks good. It looks the same. Yeah. It's the same. It's, it's basically identical. the same. You can add more tabs if you want. You can do whatever you want. And if you already have an app with tabs in it, you can just tell it to replace it and it'll work. Now you can see we're coming together. We have the, the header there. We have um, our context menu. Oof, the header's kind of cooked on that one. That was tip number three. That was tip number three. Now we're going to tip number four. All right, so we're going to implement this bottom sheet or modal. It's called both things, but essentially it's this like sheet that pops up from the bottom and it's implemented in a lot of different apps. The most common one is like the Maps app right here. I'm not going to go down from here because, I mean, we'll dox our location. <laughs> Everyone knows we're in San Francisco, but we're going to implement a bottom sheet here. I'm thinking we're going to implement it while we're adding a note. So instead of adding a note in this like little thing right here, which looks kind of honestly kind of bad, pretty bad. Um, we're just going to implement it in a bottom sheet. I like it. So let's start with that prompt. Cool. So this is the next prompt where we've implemented a bottom sheet or modal. You can implement this for a lot of different things. It depends on like the kind of UI you want to build. In my case, I implemented it to add notes. So essentially over here, I implemented it wherein you can, oh, look, we have our header. It's always nice to, to look at it, but you Ooh, can like, I like have that. this. So you can like resize this in like various sizes. You can also adjust these like snap points. So if you look at the prompt, it says 
make multiple snap points, including a full screen Can version. Can you describe what a snap point is really quick? So it's like where, where this sheet will snap. So this is like a 50% snap point because it snaps at 50% of the screen. This is like a 100% snap point. And then this is like a 10% snap point. So you can have multiple snap points for your sheets and you can like adjust them. This sheet has like a lot of different snap points. I think we have a 10, a 20, a 50, a 75 and a 100% snap point. Nice. But yeah, I can just edit um, my note and then I can also add content to existing notes. Um, and yeah, it kind of kind of works pretty well. So yeah, this like notes app now looks and feels like super, super native. Obviously, I would want to adjust the colors and things like that as well. Um, the next thing we're going to do is allow us to adjust the dates. So date pickers in iOS are pretty cool because they basically allow you to select dates and times and they look very native. So for example, in the reminders app, we can select a custom date and time. It has this picker with this like rollerblade thing. Fun fact, the last year on this is like, yeah, there we go. There you, go. you can't go more than year 10,000. Which is, which is <laughs> funny because they said it's a list instead of like a spinny circle. That's what yeah. people were talking about. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I can set this to like December 30, 40, 34, 94. <laughs> but yeah, essentially we can create um, any of these like date time pickers, you know, time works in a similar way. And so that looks pretty nice. And then we can also create these like switches. So these switches are like nice liquid glass switches. So we're going to do both of these in one go. We'll have two separate prompts, but we'll implement them both together. Cool. So these are the prompts for the switch and the date and time pickers. The switch one is super easy. This one's just built in. The date time picker um, is a little bit more complicated, but it's mostly about the styling. For some reason, the styling on the date time picker is always wrong unless you tell it the correct styling. So if you're using a white background app like I am, you want to make it use black text. And so I just told it that. So over here, if we are like editing a note, we can set a due date. So we can see that we have this like oh, nice, nice. nice switch that uses liquid glass. And then we have this nice um, native date picker. So you can do this for reminders as well. And then you can like select your due date and you can like click save. That's pretty much it. So yeah, that's kind of another native component that you can use to make your apps feel more native. So like this app now feels a lot more native. We have these headers, we have the tab bars, we have date pickers, all that good stuff. Now we're going to do our final one. And our final one actually does not require a prompt because it's built into the app. Amazing. So our final one's haptics. So haptics make your app feel a lot more native. They're like little like, mini vibrations yeah, that exactly. have like different patterns of vibration depending on what action you do. If you use a ChatGPT app, especially in the beginning, the ChatGPT app had a lot more haptics, yeah. but it, I really enjoy apps that feel more alive. Like when you press certain buttons, it can, be, you know, like you can reward the user for pressing certain buttons yeah. almost. Yeah, like the medium impact and the light impact feel really good. Like the success notification, like it feels good. Whereas like if you select the error one, it feels wrong. It's like something wrong happened. Like the only way to know it is to download the Vibe Code app and try it Yeah, because you will know when you try it. 100%. Um, and so I want to add haptics. And so Vibe Code makes it really, really easy because all I need to do is select that haptic I want. So I can be like, okay, um, when I switch tabs, I want to add this haptic. I also want to add this haptic when I create a new note successfully. Actually, just ha add this haptic in a bunch of places. <laughs> <laughs> so I can add haptics like this pr um, pretty easily. And this is the experience we want people to have with every single type of component we described today. All these prompts are just going to eventually be baked into the Vibe Code app. Mm -hmm. And so we have this new tab coming very soon, UI components, that's going to allow you to do any of this. Very, so very we're easily. basically going to take all these prompts and possibilities of things you can create and put it into the UI yeah. tab to allow you to just select it. We've already done that for like a bunch of APIs. So like if you want to add GPT-5, Gemini, uh, GPT image, nano banana, stock data, crypto data, um, 11 labs, or even Sora too, we've like put that all into the API tab. And we're going to do that all for UI components. We've already done it for haptics. We've done it for like image generation. 
where you can like generate images. So we've done a lot of this stuff already. The last two are coming very soon. Amazing. And so is the app done? Yeah, it's just adding haptics. I told it okay. to add a lot of haptics. So it's edited the note screen six times already. <laughs> okay, so it's adding it to everything. <laughs> yeah, it's just adding I love it to it. everything. Okay, haptic had it. Opening bottom sheet, opening edit sheet, creating a note, updating a note, <laughs> toggling due date switch, selecting a date, everywhere. It just added it everywhere. And it looks like it's done. No, it's done. Let's, let's feel it. Yep. Okay, cool. So try clicking add a new note and editing a note and all that stuff. Oh, yep. There's a lot of haptics going on. <laughs> There's haptics and everything. I like it. At least it's not a super intense haptic. It's more yeah, of it's like a... Yeah, light haptic. It's, That's it's, my favorite haptic is light haptic. Yeah. I had a lot of heavy haptics for fun. <laughs> <laughs> I just like it. Just intense. We're going to add more haptics that have like different patterns. Like... Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Really There's not enough haptics. like... Uh, ascending things yeah. like you can add like really fun longer haptics that i think are good in certain situations yeah we we're gonna add those haptics if you want like a particular pattern of haptics like the chat gpt haptic we're gonna add that if you want anything else we can add that too yep eventually one day we'll make our own haptic generator in the app but that's anyway that's go back to the doc there. real quick yeah so in summary uh, we covered seven different tips to create apps that look more like apple's beautifully designed apps and the final one is haptic so we talked about large header tiles context menu liquid glass bottom tab which i think might be my favorite or the context mm. menu i actually really like context menus yeah I just feel like people don't know to long press things, yeah. which is hard. Well, bonus one, the same thing. We're going to add a drop down menu, which can be used as a context menu, but you just click on a button mm. and it drops down a menu. So like this menu, for example, that shows up right now when you long press, we can also make the same menu show down, show when you like click on a button, like these three dots on the right, like top right, that could show a drop down menu. So that prompt will be very similar to this one. And we're going to add that in the final doc. So you can head over to the vibecodeapp.com slash docs site that we're going to link and you can, you can find all these prompts there. Amazing. Thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, let us know in the comments uh, what videos you want to make next. We just did a multi-month sprint on the new app. Everything is out. So what apps should we build? Should we get people who are building apps on the YouTube channel? Let us know what types of videos you want to see. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see you here for the next one.